screen six years ago as a crazed cowboy in Horse Chase, which he followed with starring roles in films like The Exploding Car, Dirty Sexy Man, Furious Andrew, and the sequel, FA2 More Furious. We met up with the man to talk about his latest film, the sci-fi thriller, They Crash From Space There. Guy, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'm attractive. Congratulations on the movie. Tell us a little bit about your role. Well, uh, the movie is called They Crashed From Space There, and I pretend to be uh, the cockney captain of a ship that crashes from space there. And it's exciting. Uh, do you like uh, crashing in spaces? Yeah. It's got the those. Am I right in thinking the part was originally going to be played by someone else? Yes, that's true. Uh, originally, the part of the Cockney Captain was going to be played by famous Nigel, who of course is a real British pretending man. But he was contracted to do the new British gangster movie, uh, Gun Blokes. So he couldn't do it and I stepped in for him. We're old buddies in fact, you know. We got to be friends on uh, The Exciting Spy a few years ago. We used to go out in the evenings, drink a whole lot, push each other in the shoulder there and make women cry. It was a good... So uh, when the uh, part became available, uh, Famous Nigel said, you should get Famous Guy, because not only is he the best at pretending, which I am, he's the best at accents too, so he could be the Cockney Captain easily. Let's take a look at They Crash From Space There. God damn it, Mac, what was so important it couldn't wait till I stabilized Jack. Yeah, all right, too, there. You just blood calm down, I'll tell you. I've got a bit of bad news. We're in Barney. Barney Rubble. Trouble. That meteor shower we just went through nosed up the oxygen tanks. Nosed them right up. One of you three's got to go out there and fix them. But here's the thing after that laser fight we had yesterday with the aliens, all the spacesuits have got L's in them. So whichever one of you three guys out there, they ain't coming back. I know it sounds like bollocks, but that's the way it goes in space. Animals are terrified of going down bumpy slides and having their mouths sewn up on there. They'd much rather wash their hands and make a big cake using their feet to mix the ingredients. If you beckon to an animal while you're fishing and use your fist to push a book with an axe in your head, they love it. But take two crabs and rub them together on a bumpy slide and you're back to square one. For Christ's sake, don't do it. Just knock on my door, puke if you have to, and we'll get a snake, tuck it into an eiderdown, wrap it up all nice and tight with loads of sellotape, build a little house around it, and roll the whole thing towards us. Water and they taste good with chips. But what else are they good for? Swimming into our list of crap at number 1245, it's fish. A fish's idea of happiness is like water. I know what I'll do. I'm gonna live in some water. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm a fish, I'm gonna live in some water. They're crap. Aquariums! Here's a better name for an aquarium. A shitarium. Fish are so crap. Oh, I can swim underwater. So what? I just want to punch them in the face. They, they swim. That's about it. You buy all the stuff. You eat them. They're just... They are conceited, smug, arrogant, 
and they're underwater. Oh look, I'm extracting oxygen from the water. Worship me as a god. Fuck off. Well, they've managed to basically hoodwink a whole nation in the fact that you use fish to make fish fingers, which are, without question, delicious. Everybody loves them. They're like this. Crap. Can you say that you think fish are crap? I like fish very much. Don't, you don't think they're crap? Not at all. You wouldn't just say they're crap quickly? No. Ah, finally! I am Tony, and I have a message for the people of Mebox. You are mainly dicks, and your clips are lame. Um, that's about it. Uh, yeah, that's it for the time being. I'm Ken Corder. Welcome to another edition of Talking Independent Film, a brand new vodcast dedicated to all aspects of the modern independent filmmaking scene. This week I'm delighted to say that I've been joined by a very exciting young actress who starred in over three independent films. Her latest is a gritty portrayal of life on a tough working class estate and it's called Shooter Close. Let's have a look. Talking Independent Film! Get out! Get out of my house, you stupid man! and take your bag of drugs with you! And if you ever lay a finger on me or Cassie again, I will kill you! Do you hear me? What? Do you hear me? What? <sighs> uh, Tina, can I just say, I'm loving the film. You must be really pleased. I am really pleased. You should be, because it's very long and depressing. And your character is absolutely wretched, isn't she? But she's, you know, I think she's quite strong too. Very strong. Let me ask you this, Tina. Is it important to you to play women that are very strong? Yes. Tina Belcher, thanks very much indeed for joining us. I really hope somebody sees the film. Next time, my guest will be the actress Tina Belcher. Uh, so till then, Chibi Baito. Time for another look at some software. Uh, this is Movie Maker. It's a great bit of kit uh, which enables you to put together a mainstream film which will perform perfectly adequately at the box office in just a few minutes. First thing we do is select a successful genre. Let's go for action comedy and we'll put some horror in there as well. Okay. Now we select our storyline, and we'll go for Amusing Loser uncovers a plot in, and we decide where it all takes place, and we'll choose the entertainment industry, which is great, because people love looking inside the entertainment industry, don't they? So there you go, that's the hard work done. Now we can have a bit of fun with these other funky little bits and pieces here. Okay, let's apply a cameo. As you can see, there's a lot to choose from. Uh, I think we'll go for Ricky Gervais and select Not Embarrassing. Over here's The Twister. 
which allows you to add a mind-blowing twist to your film. And I think we'll go for, it was him all along. That's probably all we need. I suppose you could add a woman if you wanted to. Let's go for Jessica Alba, because we don't want to take too many chances, and she's cheaper than Scarlett. Okay, now we just press right. That takes a couple of seconds. And there you go. A finished screenplay for our film, which is called Shooting Jeff. And of course, it's already been green lit as soon as you authorise the software. You can even check how well your film is likely to perform by clicking on the projector icon here. And you can see that Shooting Jeff would take an extremely respectable two million pounds on its opening weekend, possibly more, despite being absolutely shit. Okay. Sausages, mm, can you see my lovely sausages? He's got a lot of different types. Little ones and longer ones, they look like little meaty pipes. Chippo latas, they are tasty, yum yum. Sausages, mm, I would like to eat my sausages. But sadly we're raw. Sausages, please keep your distance from the sausages. Or he'll show you the door. Sausages. Guy's fiery temper is notorious, and he was recently accused of mental cruelty by a former workmate. Can you tell us what happened with the makeup lady who tried to sue you recently? Okay, now this is a few months ago when we were working on the crash from space there, and it was early one morning, I was in the makeup trailer getting my face decorated, and the woman, she was talking, talking, talking to me and saying, oh, guy, you're famous and uh, young and uh, attractive. You're the best at pretending. And I was seduced by your animalistic pretending in the film, uh, Dirty Sexy Man. And my son loved you as the voice of Bob the Ballpoint in the animated feature, Pens. And I was moved to tears when you pretended to have cancer in uh, Family Man with Cancer. I won a prize. And uh, is there any chance you could sign my knees? And at that point, I just put my foot down and said, why don't you tell someone who could give you a sandwich, you knocker? Okay? I'm trying to concentrate on getting in the mind zone of a man who just crashed from space there. So why don't you concentrate on decorating my face, you farticle? I should punch you right in the jacket, but I'm instead going to go back to my trailer, which incidentally is far too small and badly appointed, you pope. And then she started to cry and, you know, I felt bad. But I made it all good, you know, I, I sent her a really nice uh, money. Let's take another look at they crash from space there. Earth link established. Please stand by. All right, this is Edge. I'm out, obviously, so leave a message. Don't just hang up like a prat. Ta-da! Edge, it's Mac. But you never thought you'd hear my voice on that phone, did you? You always used to hate it when I didn't leave a message. Well, I'm leaving one now. Only I wish it was a different one. We're in a bit of a two and eight, babe. Not much air left. And we're going to be out of range in a second, so I better keep this short. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was never there for you. I'm sorry I, I never believed in you. And most of all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hello, are you still there? Who is this? I it's Mac. Is that you, Angie? Oh, hi, Mac. No, it's Elaine. Angie's out with the kids. You all right? Uh, more or less. Elaine, can you get a message to Angie? Yeah, all right. Hang on, I'll get a pen. No, 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 wait. Elaine! Alert. Alert. Out of telecommunications range. In... Elaine! Oh. Three. Elaine, you stupid blind Two. girl! Okay, what was the message? Uh, Elaine, tell Angie! Out of range. Out of range. Out of range. Tell Angie to put the bloody cat back on the turf pest. Yeah, hi, Tony here. Uh, just wanted to leave a comment about that last clip. I didn't like it. Anyone agree? Uh, message me back. I'm quite bored. <laughs> Now, of course, today marks the anniversary on Xantiar of the great drilling mission to defeat the evil dwellers of the inner core. And our correspondent, Jojel Fufulkwai, is there. It's a big occasion, isn't it, for the Xantarians? 
Very much so. We're just about to see the ruler Splendursula emerge from the halls of Yanthrakar wearing an advanced Humuvian gown, which is connected to a floating life drone by a pipe which sustains her energy force. You can just about make it out there as she emerges from the halls of Yanthrakar. And uh, any moment now, we will be hearing the Xantarian fanfare played by Splendursula's avant guardsman. And here she is, the energy pipe from her floating life drone clearly visible now. Beside her sits Sublord Utilax, who is wearing his ceremonial symbiote Ronjons. And uh, Splendursula, of course, has required the life drone ever since the unsuccessful attack on her life by the Kiltrons last Yaren. And now we go to the parade ground of Lukox, where a living sacrifice will be made to the underground garage beast of Xantiar in return for the Great Drill, which lies there in storage. And looking on, as the underground garage beast retrieves the great drill, are the Xantarian guard. And just like Sublord Utilax, each guard wears his own unique symbiote. The symbiotes, of course, keep the heads of the guards snug and warm, and in return, they suck their brains. And here is the Great Drill, which burrowed down to the centre of the planet to defeat the evil core dwellers. And one of those who used his mechanical morphing powers to transform himself into part of this device was Super Commander Deck Laser, who we spoke to earlier today. As I've said on previous occasions, I was only a small cog uh, in this very large machine. When there were 27,000 of us that went down uh, in total, uh, 8,000 miles, uh, which was an extraordinary feat of achievement. Life in the 70s was absolute bollocks. We had this uh, three-day week, uh, rubbish piling up in the streets, no food in the supermarkets, dead going unburied, thanks to Labour. These dinosaur bands like ELP playing self-indulgent rock music, fiddly guitar and keyboard solos going on forever, said nothing whatever about one's life. One afternoon, I turned on the TV. There was this band, The Sex Pistols. I watched Open Mouth while they played Anarchy in the UK. I am an anti It was a clarion call to the working classes, and we responded. We knew from that moment that nothing was going to be the same. We had to get rid of all that baggage and be reprogrammed. It was as if they were saying, you could do this. You don't have to take this bullshit anymore. It was music that anyone could play. You just picked up a guitar, learned a couple of chords. That was it, you got a band. They've been around for thousands of years, but they just keep getting crapper. At number 8,760, it's Buildings. In the taxi on the way here, I tried to make two lists. One of the buildings I liked within London, the other their function. Both lists were empty. Buildings, they are, you know, crap, so crap. Oh, I love the idea. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build these giant structures, right? And we're all gonna live and work in them. Oh, yeah, sign me up. I'd love to do that. Crap, 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 crap. Once you get inside and you want to go somewhere else within the building, maybe higher up than where you are, there's only two ways of going there. You can either take the lift, which has got to be one of the crappest ways of going up and down ever created, or you can take the stairs. Have you ever been on stairs? At the end of the day, you're left with crap. Which really is the end of the conversation, I think. The iPhone is, is definitely going to struggle against some of the big names like Nokia that are already owning the mobile phone market. In a particular... It's obviously the smartphone market, but it does have enough of a point of difference. But it sets it apart in, in potential customers' minds, and I think that's why it will end. 
Bob, she had a handle on her chest, a special pack of cards, and a nail through her hand. Her breasts were badly unbalanced, and her finger was bent back. She was stroking a very uneven cat, which she put into a zip pocket on her arm. She saw her breasts pop out and shouted no as she got into a fight with a man in a suit who was drinking champagne, wearing a bib and a bowler hat. She opened a big book and snapped it shut on the man's fingers. I didn't like having a book shut on my finger, said the man. You are a rotten person, and I hope your nipples fall off. Also, you smell. Wait, she said. On your shoulder, there's a man's head. He's got a goatee, and I think it's Jesus. Do you want me to stab him in the neck with a fork? No way, said the man. Think about it. Why would I want you to stab my own head with a fork? Because it's teeny weeny and made of paper, said the woman. That's enough, said the man, stamping her passport. Twice. He broke a breadstick and jabbed it into the palm of her hand. She couldn't take any more and said, Stop! My breasts are very hot. I ate something weird today and now my breath stinks. <laughs> Next time on Bad Dad's Clichéd Memories of Punk. Bad Dad remembers Malcolm McLaren. Just seriously made history, you guys. Oh, Malcolm was just a bloody wanker. Everybody knew it. The Pistols and Bill Grundy. Go on, you've got another five you seconds. Say something outrageous. You dirty bastard. Bill Grundy was just goading him, so Steve gave him what he wanted. Big time. And the Manchester gig that started it all. Everyone who was the Manchester Lesser Free Trade Hall gig went off to start a band. Pete Shelley, Bernie Sumner, Morrissey, Tom York, Michael Stipe, Bono, Suggs, Lolly, Billy, Scooch, Robbie Williams. Guy insists on working closely with his director and co-stars to hone every aspect of his projects. You know, Guy has this huge monologue and I don't say anything and I just feel like I should have a line or something. Put a line in somewhere. Maybe you later put another line in just here. Uh, just what, oh, what kind of line? Well, I just feel like, you know, you're there saying about the alien fight we had right. yesterday and there's holes in our shoes. Yeah. And I know that because I was there. Oh, yeah. And I saw that all, so I just feel like I should say, like, well, you know, duh. Yeah, you're yeah. attracted, yeah. Just put it in somewhere around here. Maybe. So the... Oh, it's quite a nice idea. See? All right, so put it right around here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you say an extra thing. Yeah, in the middle of your speech. That's a good idea. You, I feel like I should say something. That's a good idea, Thank you're attractive. Thank you, well, it's nice to... <laughs> we shouldn't do it, though. We won't do it. But it's good, I like it. We should well, definitely yeah. not we'll do sit, it. Sit we should definitely not okay. do the idea that she said. Okay. 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 Right, shall we, um, can we just get everyone back on the floor, please? Uh, relighting. Thanks. Hi, Tony here. I just wanted to respond to some of the messages I've received since my last post. First of all, sick boy 78 It is not I that looks like a colossal prick. It is you! Secondly, Jolly Roger, I do not suck asses. It is you, Jolly Roger, that sucks the asses. And finally, Nancy, thank you for saying you like my shiny buton. I checked out your profile, and despite the blurry picture of yourself that you posted there, I can tell that you're extremely ugly. However, I looked at the video for Spoon you recommended. I like it! Everyone should see it! So far and keep on marching along, beating his drum. Don't make me a target, don't make me a target. When he reaches back in his mind, feels like he's breaking the law. There's something back there he got that nobody knows. Never claim to say what he says He smells like the inside of closets upstairs The kind where nobody goes
a target During filming on They Crashed From Space There, Guy worked closely with a dialogue coach to perfect his Cockney accent. That bloody meteor shower we just went through. The, that bloody meteor shower we just went through. Yeah. Only went and north up the oxygen tanks. Only went and north up the oxygen tanks. Only went and north up. Only went and north up. The oxygen tanks. Oxygen tanks. The oxygen tanks. North and right up. North and right up. North them right up. North them right up. I got it! Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> 